Hello and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for Free with Ms Estrick. In this video we're going to be going through Required Practical 8 from A-Level Biology and this links to photosynthesis. The name of the practical is Investigating the Rate of Dehydrogenase Activity in Extracts of Chloroplasts. Now get yourself some pen and paper at the ready to make notes, in particular if you have this required practical to plan or to write up, this video will really help you. There are also questions at the end to give you an idea of the types of exam questions you could get linked to this practical. Now I'm going to set this video up in the same way that you could be asked to set up your required practical in your write up in your lab book. So we'll go through the aim background, hypothesis, method, results, conclusion, limitations. Now the method is going to be very limited. I'm just going to go through the setup that I would have used and explain each part of the setup. So first then, the aim of the investigation. So the aim of this required practical is to find out what effect the addition of a variable has on the rate of dehydrogenase enzyme in chloroplasts. Now dehydrogenase enzyme is not one of the enzymes on the specification that you need to know in regards to its role in photosynthesis. So this is um, adding in a new enzyme, but it links the idea of how enzymes function, which is part of your theory. The variable that I'm going to be changing is ammonium hydroxide. And that's actually the one that AQA suggests in their required practical handbook. So we're going to be looking at, does adding ammonium hydroxide increase, decrease, or potentially stop the rate of dehydrogenase enzymes? Now, because this enzyme is not on the specification, I'm going to start off with a bit of background about the enzyme, photosynthesis, and some of the chemicals we're going to be using in this reaction. So we'll start with photosynthesis. Photoionization of chlorophyll and photolysis or photolysis of water, both of those reactions occur in the light dependent reaction because they require light energy for those processes or for those reactions. And in both photoionization and photolysis, electrons are released. The dehydrogenase enzyme, which naturally occurs inside of chloroplasts, that enzyme catalyzes reactions involved in the NADP, which is the coenzyme, accepting or picking up those electrons which have been released. Now, the chemical that we're going to use to be able to track this release and accepting of electrons is DCPIP. And this is a redox indicator, meaning it changes colour depending on whether the chemical is oxidized or reduced. So we'll be able to track whether it's picked up or released electrons. And DCPIP is blue when it is oxidized and it turns colorless when it is reduced. So when it has picked up electrons, it loses its color. And what DCPIP is able to do is pick up the electrons which are released in photoionization and photolysis from the light dependent reaction instead of that coenzyme NADP. So last bit of background is um, the ammonium hydroxide, and that is the variable that we said we're changing. So this is an alkaline solution. So it could be that because it's alkaline, it denatures the dehydrogenase enzyme, and therefore it's no longer able to catalyze these reactions. Or it could be that ammonium hydroxide, it also has the ability to accept electrons. So if the ammonium hydroxide picks up the electrons instead of the DC pip or the NADP, the DC pip won't go from this blue color that it is when it's oxidized to being completely colorless when it's reduced. So that's the background information. And from this then, we can come up with our hypothesis. And the hypothesis is a prediction on what we expect to find. So I'm gonna be predicting that the rate of reaction is going to decrease when I add ammonium hydroxide based on what we've just said in the background knowledge. So the method then, what I'm gonna be doing is setting up five test tubes. Only the last two 
are my experimental tubes where I'll be gaining the evidence or the data to be able to say whether this prediction is correct or not. The other three are to help with the validity of the experiment. So test tube one, I've got all five here already set up, but because you can't actually see the color um, with the angles, I'm going to show a diagram here as well so you know what is in each tube. So test tube that I've labeled C is my first test tube. And this is my standard. So all that is in that test tube is a chloroplast suspension, which I created by blending spinach in an isolation medium. My isolation medium is a salt solution, which is isotonic. And we're gonna come back to the relevance of that later. So I've just got my chloroplast suspension and distilled water. And the purpose of this test tube is, I'm gonna be looking at these final two to decide when they turn, or the, when the DC pip turns colorless. However, it's not actually going to be a colorless solution in my test tube because there will be DC pip and chloroplast. So when the DC pip goes colorless, what I'll actually be left with is just the green color of chloroplasts. So that's the purpose of this first test tube, test tube C. This is to show me what color just the chloroplasts are. And when these two experimental tubes reach that same color, that is when I'm gonna say I'm at the end point, DC pip has been completely decolorized. So that's my standard for comparison, to try and help with the fact that it is subjective endpoint. I've also got two control experiments and control experiment one we can see here is covered in foil which I'm trying to represent here with that grey colour. What is actually inside the test tube though is still the chloroplast suspension, still distilled water and this time DC pip as well. But the test tube is covered in foil to prevent light from reaching that solution. And the purpose of this control experiment is to prove that DC pip will not decolorize when there isn't light. And therefore it's showing us what we found in our background knowledge. It will be showing us that the electrons are only released when there is light available. So they're releasing the light dependent reactions. So we're expecting no color change at all in this test tube and that will prove that light is required. My second control experiment, which is the one just here, as I said, you can't see the color, but it is actually that bright blue color of DC pip. All I have in this one is distilled water again, DC pip, and this time I'm not putting in the chloroplast suspension, because what I'm going to be proving with this control experiment is, DC pip does not decolorize unless chloroplasts are present. And that will then show that the dehydrogenase enzyme within the chloroplasts are required. So I'm still going to add the isolation medium, which was used to make the chloroplast suspension. Again, just so we can show it's not anything within that medium, which is causing the color change. It is just the chloroplasts. So those are my first three, which is to help with the validity. The actual experimental tubes. So experimental tube one, this is the color it looks. And we've got our chloroplast suspension, which is why it's partly green. We've got distilled water and the DC pip. Now the DC pip is bright blue, but because it's mixed with the chloroplast suspension, it's more this teal um, color. So for this one, I'm going to be timing how long it takes um, for this particular color of the chloroplast and the DC pip to go completely green as it is in the standard tube. And that will indicate when the DC pip is turned colorless and therefore the end point of the reaction that we're indicating. Experimental tube two is to prove or to investigate what effect adding ammonium hydroxide has. So we'll have the chloroplast suspension, water, DC pip, but the difference between experimental tube one and two is we're going to add ammonium hydroxide. And as I said, this is to investigate the time taken for the DC pip to decolorize with the ammonium hydroxide. So those are my five test tubes that I'll be setting up. Just to show you how I got that chloroplast suspension. 
So to homogenize or blend and break open the cells, I used spinach leaves and the isolation medium, which is ice cold and it contains salts to make it isotonic. Once I've homogenized and blended for no more than 15 seconds, I then filter through a muslin cloth. And this stage is to remove large debris. So it could be large cell debris, other organelles. So we're just filtering to just get the isolation medium and the chloroplasts. So then I've got all my test tubes set up and I'm ready to go. So I put them all in an ice cold water bath and have a light source, which is needed because it's the light dependent reaction. At this point, the stop clock will be started and I'm gonna time how long it takes the two experimental tubes to turn exactly the same green color as my test tube C. Now you'll notice that um, I'm turning the tube's position, the test tube position, and that's because I've actually only got one lamp source or light source from the lamp. Um, so there's not actually an equal distribution in that light, which is a limitation. Now at this stage, I'm going to stop the stop clock because I can now see that my test tube X, which was experimental tube one, is now the same color green as test tube C. So that will be the first time that I record. And then I carried on for a further 20 minutes to see if test tube X changed color. And here are the results um, a bit clearer. So the first one I said it took 7 minutes 44 seconds and I'll convert that all into seconds. The actual title of the required practical is the investigating the effect on the rate of reaction and this is just the time taken. To convert into rate of reaction you can do 1 divided by the time taken. My actual results so as I said here is comparing the X test tube, which is experimental tube one, with my standard test tube, and I can see they're now exactly the same color. So the DC pit was decolorized, um, and that was the endpoint of my reaction. Experimental test tube two, this is the start color, it never actually changed. It's still got that dark greeny blue because it's a mixture of the blue DC pip and the green chloroplast suspension. So this one didn't change color. So I recorded that as no change. And in terms of the rate of reaction, that was zero for rate of reaction. So here's all three of those, just so you can see the comparison. So the first one is the standard test tube to see the color that we're expecting. The middle one is my experimental tube one. And the final one here is experimental tube two. So based on this, my conclusion would be that the addition of ammonium hydroxide did decrease the rate of dehydrogenase enzyme activity. You could be asked to consider some limitations. So three limitations I can notice straight away from that is that the endpoint is subjective. I did use a test tube with the chloroplast suspension to try and help with this issue. So I had a standard to compare to, yet you'd still find if you do this amongst a class of students, they will still all have different opinions of when it is exactly that same color green. So it is still subjective. The only way to overcome this would be to come up with a quantitative measure of the endpoint. And you could do this through the use of a colorimeter. Another limitation was the unequal distribution of light because I was only using that one lamp as my light source. So potentially I could add four lamps. So I've got a light source pointing from four different sides of the water bath reaching all of the different test tubes. Lastly, the way I set it up, the foil was not blocking out all of the light. Some light could be coming in from the top. So you would need to fully cover, including the top, um, with foil. So lastly then, questions that could come up linked to this required practical. So at this stage, pause the video and have a go at these five exam questions. Right, let's go through these then. So the first one, why must all solutions be ice cold? And this is now linking back to your cells topic in year 12. 
So you'd have to have them ice cold because when you blend that spinach and when you're breaking open or homogenizing the plant cells, you're releasing enzymes that will now be in contact with the chloroplasts, which are naturally in contact. And those enzymes might actually damage the chloroplasts. So by having it ice cold, it will reduce the activity of all those enzymes so they shouldn't be able to damage the chloroplasts. Number two over here, why were the spinach leaves blended? This was to release the chloroplasts. So we're breaking open the cell or homogenizing to release the chloroplasts. Why did you filter the blended spinach? This was to remove the large pieces of cell debris and other organelles. Why must the isolation medium be an isotonic solution? First of all, I just pointed out what isotonic means. So that's when the water potential of the solution is the same as the water potential inside of the chloroplast. The reason that's important is so that we don't have osmosis occurring. because so we don't want water to be moving into the chloroplast, potentially causing it to burst, or water moving out of the chloroplast by osmosis, causing it to shrivel. And then the last one, ammonium hydroxide and other electron exception chemicals are used as weed killers. And we have to suggest how they may kill weeds. So we've shown in this required practical that when we added ammonium hydroxide, there wasn't any change in the color of DC pip. So therefore we know that the ammonium hydroxide is slowing down or even stopping the light dependent reaction. And if we don't have the light dependent reaction, ATP and NADPH are not being produced. Therefore, if we don't have those two, the light independent reaction, the Calvin cycle, will no longer occur and organic substances such as glucose won't be being made and the plant, in this case, which is our weed, will eventually die. So in summary, um, the photoionization of chlorophyll is occurring during the light dependent reaction and the chlorophyll is emitting those electrons. Photolysis of water is the splitting of water into hydrogen ions, oxygen, and the electrons are the parts that we are interested in this investigation. The dehydrogenase enzyme naturally occurs in chloroplasts, and that is catalyzing the reactions involved in NADP accepting electrons. DC PIP is a redox indicator which picks up electrons from the light dependent reaction instead of NADP. It's blue in color when it's oxidized, but it turns colorless when it's reduced. And measuring the time taken for the DC PIP to decolorize can be used as our dependent variable, measuring the um, dehydrogenase activity. So there we go. I hope that helps you with either planning, writing up, or just understanding required practical eight. If you do want to practice and test your understanding further, um, I'll put a link to my website, missestrick.com, below, where you can find more required practical questions linked to just this practical or others. And don't forget, if you aren't already subscribed, just click the symbol here to subscribe to make sure you keep up to date with all the latest videos to help you with your revision and learning of A-Level Biology.